Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in uh, Mumbai, and many thanks to the organisers for inviting in view with this opportunity now to to speak a little bit about monetization of, of set-top boxes. My name's Mark Rooney. Um, I'm Vice President for Business Development for InView. Now, InView is a UK-based company. We're actually uh, based only a few miles from the Old Trafford Cricket Ground in Manchester. Uh, and we've been around for about 15 years, very much as a technology innovator, uh, technical, commercial, and operational expertise within the TV industry. Um, we provide software that goes into the middleware in set-top boxes. And really, we've been specializing over the last few years in analog switch-off and wide-scale legacy set-top box upgrades. So in addition to new pay TV services, we have deals with broadcast, with OTT services, and a high-end user experience on a low-cost platform. And that's what enables operators really to better monetize their content. So really, that's why we're in the position of, of being able to talk about this, because we have, for many years, have been seeking to exploit the potential revenues on very low-cost set-top boxes. So if we go to... Sorry, I'm having... Excuse me, I'm... Right, so... If we start first of all then with the, um, the, the, the premise of what we're trying to say, it's, it's more for less. It's building more revenue streams on the existing infrastructure, by which I mean the set-top box, which may have a low processing power, it may have low memory, um, and may not be a huge amount in terms of, of spend for, for, for dollars. There are things that can be done with that infrastructure, with that set-top box, which we've specialized in, really, in, in integrating, for example, advertising directly into the user interface, allowing full-screen adverts, and more about that. But there's other things, like push VOD, um, using the USB and the set-top box as a, as a means for doing it. But I'm going to focus, really, on targeting advertising, because that is something that can be done by operators and under their control, and actually it can mean that revenues come to them, not necessarily just to the, the broadcasters. So if we, we look at target advertising in, in India, and I'm not going to come here and tell you that India's a very, very big place. You know that. Um, what, what, me, what it means, though, is that in India, you have 175 um, million TV households, you have in every space the upper end and the lower end, you, you know, very, very large demographics. The demographics around the lower end mean that the set-top box can be used to generate revenue through the sort of things we're talking about, the user interface, the EPG, without actually rising the ARPU from the end customer themselves. I mean, in the panel, uh, the last panel we had, um, there was talk of saying, well, look, at the cinema, it's, it's you know, it's 100 rupees compared with 8 to $10 in, in the US. And, and that's reflected. So in, in that situation, it makes no sense to be talking to you today and, and, and talking about how you can get from a subscriber paying $1.50 or $2 a month an extra 2 or $3. That's not going to work. Um, but what may work is by being able to do advertising in that marketplace um, and directly to the, the LCOs as well as the larger ones and, and possibly direct that, um, that, that targeted advertising, banner advertising, very much um, to the local element. And when I say local, I mean the LCOs. If we look at the advertising revenues in India um, of around $6.6 .6 billion, um, but growing at 6 to 8% a year. And we compare that with the US where it's 100 billion a year. You can see there's going to be a lot of growth in this as we go forward as, as well. Um, we, I mentioned at the start our expertise in what we've been able to do. We were involved in um, launching Freeview in the UK um, in 9 million boxes um, from the year 2000. And we were able to roll in a number of elements on the just simply the banner advertising um, and, and, and EPG cross-promotion. We're able to do that. 
Um, in, in a number of ways, we eventually went on to well over 10 million um, set-top boxes, but we worked with one company that was the first um, pay TV DTT service in, in the world called Top Up TV. And this, I'll give you an example if we look at this case study of, of what that really means. Um, we, we were able to make sure that the electronic program guide and everything that was involved with it was constantly be able to do things so that you know, the operator had direct communication to its customer, the top-up TV in this case, or, 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 or any operator can, can promote their own content over competing free-to-air alternatives, and that worked well. Promote special offers and promotions, upsell the customers from a, a basic package to a premium package, sell third party advertising, and, and really maximize the revenues possible through that user interface. One of the things, because we focused on this element, which we believe makes us unique, is that whilst we've listened in the industry to different views of television, lean forward, lean back. We've basically accepted that watching TV is an immersive activity. And as every panelist has said today, it's about that consumer experience. So we, it needs to be done in a very unobtrusive way, but a, a very effective way. And, and this is what we found with Top Up TV, because over 50% of the customer acquisitions and 65% of their upgrades to things like premium sport and movies were actually driven by the promotions from the EPG and the user interface. And, and so it worked extremely well. And, and the net effect of that, of course, was that um, we were able, through the EPG, to it became self-fulfilling. It, it meant the order of, of, of placing channels, the other elements of that, much more subtly, um, it was the ability to put push VOD in there as well, so that you could, again, start to look at it from, from push VOD where you're, you're using, the in their case, they use the overnight broadcast bandwidth to, to push content to the box. The boxes either had DVR or on the lowest boxes, we made sure it was possible to use with a, a USB um, memory stick, which was just, just plugged in. So it, it turned a basic zapper box, which was not costing a great am amount of the money for the, the operators, into a PVR-ready one. And it could also be stored on an external memory device. So all these elements start to build around the consumer experience. The end user doesn't feel as though it is being pushed to him in an obtrusive way. He actually feels as though it's helping him. It's helping with the experience. And you know, from the consumer point of view, the, they had the benefit, they had viewer awareness of new program choices, whether it was on the linear, um, side of things, or as we ultimately developed on um, what we could do on the, the connected TV devices. It reminds them to watch the favorite programs, so it, again, it, it builds a, a stickiness there. It, they could see straight away special offers and incentives to watch promoted pay TV channels, and it was able to provide highlights of selected programs, etc. So you found that with the targeted advertising, but then on the push VOD side, you were also able to look at it where you could cost effectively as an operator, uh, be able to um, deliver more um, using overnight broadcasts. It became a complete entertainment center. Again, we're talking about $30, $40 boxes here. Um, customer loyalty was there, so churn became less of, a, of an issue. And it was a differentiation of zapper boxes over the competitors. And finally, as we, we move forward to, to you know, the ever-increasing challenge of how to get people to stay watching television whilst at the same time embracing new technology, it, it allowed them to use what they wanted to watch when they wanted and, and, and therefore just created a great experience. Aside from that, and the, bearing in mind that a lot of what I'm talking about, this the targeted advertising or, or the push fod can be done, you don't have to necessarily be done IP, it can be done over the air, uh, as we, we mentioned, over, over air downloads at, at the night when it's much cheaper, but also it starts to move to, again, what they were talking about in, in the, the last panel about um, people's thirst for knowledge, their ability to gather a lot of things. So. Um, information services was another area where we could op open that 
communication portal through information services. And I've mentioned there Nigeria because um, last year we announced that we were selected as the mandated software to go in Nigeria's uh, analog switchover, which is taking place at the moment and very, uh, being driven very aggressively over the next couple of years. Um, this is no, no small project. Nigeria is one of the largest countries in the world. It's the largest um, growing economy in, in Africa. And we have been central in being able to take what is being there to be, to be offered on a very, very low cost platform, but give it, give it a very, very good consumer experience. Um, and so there are some sim similarities, really, if we look at, at that. So what we're doing there, and you can see from the information services I've, I've just shown you, but then we go on to um, a Netflix type push VOD service and how that can be done. And again, it has to be done very, very cost effectively um, for the reasons that Nigeria will have the, the low ARPU rate gr growing, going based at the moment, but which will gradually grow as the company uh, continues to grow. Um, and all this is without the need of an internet connection. And again, we heard this morning of some of the challenges that India faces in terms of getting that uh, penetration and those, those bandwidth speeds going. So for what we're doing in Nigeria is, is obviously to be able to add value on a very low cost box. It doesn't need a super processor. It doesn't need a huge amount of memory. And when you consider going forward how many boxes will ultimately be deployed in, in India, you can see that the, you know, a dollar here and a dollar there saving on, on the bill of material of the box or um, being able to provide services which traditionally we're not able to do it. This is a huge amount of, of money you know, in the billions going forward over the next 10 years. So there, obviously, we're, we're focusing around the, the Nollywood industry in Nigeria. Now is an example to see what we're doing, actually, how it could look like in India with Bollywood films. And again, it's just being able to, to drive those, those things forward. I've spent a lot of time talking about um, the, the whole area there of targeted advertising. That is only going to be effective, and people are only going to start putting money into that if there is a very, very good way of audience measurement. And it's been really important that following that, and we've been doing this again going back 15 years, is, is how you measure that, or, that, that audience, how you gather the information on user behavior, and how that you al allow for that data to be sent through. Uh, there are many ways of getting the data from the box. Obviously, if it's IP connected, it, 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 it's very easy. But what happens if it's non-connected? Uh, well, we've been doing exercises for many, many years, which have been around um, getting uh, SMS uh, codes sent. You could use QR codes. We, we, we found it very, very effective in the UK um, many years ago to um, set up a user panel um, which was a relatively small amount of the total user, user panel, but one that was um, well accepted within the industry as being very, very accurate. Um, and, the, it, for example, you know, we're able to offer, and it's able to be offered, a, a series of web consoles to create those reports. So why would you measure the, the audiences? Well, if somebody's paying money, they want to know that uh, commercially, it's, it's going to be useful, and bearing in mind a lot of the advertisers that we've had in the past were actually commercial television broadcasters. Um, it sits comfortably with the trading model used by advertising agencies to sell adverts and is based on effectively the number of people who, who watch the program. And without this, and this is why we've had this underpinning from day one, uh, the model would fall apart because it would be very difficult to, to justify. So with, with what we're doing in terms of the banner advertising, and I repeat, the banner advertising, the operator is able to drive, and he's able to control. Um, the success of banner campaigns can be tracked, making very much the, the advertising on the platform a much more compelling proposition and easier to sell than it would otherwise be. And all in all, it makes the consumer experience uh, much better because 
we can understand how viewers are using the box, how we can reach them in the future. So um, in, in terms of all that, so, so in summary, what I'm saying is, even take a low cost box, there are ways of driving that forward. There are ways of driving it forward without necessarily expecting the end consumer to foot the bill. Um, and that's where targeted advertising um, through the EPG, through the user interface is important. And it will also um, clear the way for the, the pursuits of other things such as push VOD to actually come forward and make all existing boxes, all low cost boxes actually start generating revenue now. Thank you very much.